and then great welcome everybody we're uh <laughs> i sent you a meeting request to um open up the screen if you want um okay what do we got here okay um just we did a lot of uh work evidently since the last time it looks like we're re-enabling where we are with sawtooth um there's a bunch of discussion a couple of people have uh, asked questions and uh thanks sean for guiding a few of them through there and kevin and uh, i believe uh, bill um, have all guided people through there so that's good and we need to start reaching out and having more people enabled on this so the i just threw the agenda up here um in terms of what's um up on um, google drive so basically you know we're to keep the one dot current x line current we've got a bunch of um, ideas on here um that we need to walk through um we made a lot of progress let's keep that up um and i think the first question we had on there was should the project take what's in main and, and take 1.3 or 1-3 and make it the main so that would be the branch structure um and i believe uh that was um sean you're the one who brought that up so if you want to walk us through that sure oh uh, so kind of the the current state of maine and why this is this is interesting is um the, there's a ton of good stuff in in maine that isn't in one three um that kind of puts one three to shame actually um however um one of the decisions that we made uh quite a while ago was switch over to transact before it could run transaction processors um largely because some of us are completely uninterested in um any other language uh than uh stuff that would run in wasm uh which included all of the maintainers um uh and so we put our effort into uh into that and didn't implement uh transaction processor support um uh which leaves it in the current state of uh you know the rest of the the community here not um not migrating to it um yeah. as we as we move forward like uh, uh i guess like a, a principle i'd like to move forward with is uh that we move um forward as a as a single community uh and not kind of fork the project uh and so with kind of renewed interest in in one three um i think it probably makes sense um to go back there's a larger uh i think community here uh uh around one three um then uh i anticipated uh surely um that we go back and and we we just start back porting um the good stuff off of the other branch to one three but then uh, to make it clear that, like you know, we have one uh, essentially development branch uh, that we name that that branch main, and I think it's probably an easier um, or it's an it it would be an easier path to start with one three uh, and kind of not break it uh, as it as it were than to um, fill in any gaps between uh, Maine and what uh, the community expects right now out of out of a one three feature set. Do people have comments on that? Kevin, Bill, anybody else? I'd probably ask is if there are there any uh, infrastructure gotchas. I don't really have an opinion uh, on whether or not to do it. It's just are there any? Will will there be any? breakage if we do that from infrastructure and things like that 
I'll have to clean up build stuff. Um, you know, the most the most disruptive piece beyond, you know, uh, the cleaning up the build stuff, obviously, is going to be messing up everyone's uh, repos. <laughs> um, uh, the forks, yeah. Right. The, the forks and, like, you know, personal checkouts based on main and stuff like that, uh, you know. In an ideal world, this is something you would never do, right? Um, kind of a black eye. But it is where we are. Um, and I think it does make sense to kind of rally around, you know, single code base uh, uh, more than just uh, kind of continue to diverge. Because uh, we can, there's plenty of examples of communities uh, diverging and essentially creating two completely different things. Um, I think that. That can work if there's a big enough community. I don't think we have a big enough community for uh, uh, kind of multiple projects here. I, I'm in full agreement with that, that we need to have it um, merge back. I don't think you're going to have much pushback. I'm not sure who's using it up and down the line. I think we'll find out once we uh, break their forks or break whatever they've got on their server. Um, and they'll come to us at that point. So we have to be ready to answer those questions. But uh, I've been involved in multiple open source projects and it, it, sometimes it comes to a point where you've got to do this. So um, I think I think the people that would care are using Splinter because it is, um, you know, like a hundred times better. So um, uh, uh, basically in every way, than, than Sawtooth, except for um, consensus and transaction processor support, but like from like a stability perspective. So uh, that being the case, like there's not a lot of uh, Sawtooth nodes um, uh, that are first, like first order Sawtooth nodes. Okay. Um, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Running actively? You're saying, what do you mean by that that statement? There's not that many nodes. Not that many splinter. I think it means not that many splinter not, nodes. Not that not source. that many like uses of this code base in main in like um POCs or production and stuff like that. Because I in think the that, wild, I see. Right. So I don't think we're gonna be um breaking um you know uh people's environments. Um, I don't think that's a real concern. So you, you don't think there's very many people using Sawtooth itself, um, and they've and many of them have migrated over. How many people are using um, Splinter? Do you think? So I don't. I don't want to comment on that because of all the NDAs okay. and all of that stuff is is NDAs. So. I, um, but suffice it to it's say fine. that, like, you know, the team that was working on um, on this stuff, uh, you know, a lot of like the vision, the overall vision um, was to bring all of the um, really good stuff that um, uh, is in Splinter, essentially new networking layer, um, back to Sawtooth. Um, and that that's what the, the main branch essentially does um, in part. It's not, uh, it's not like we're going to kill the branch though, right? We're just going to move it off to another we'll one. Just, we'll just there. move it. Right. But, but I'd rather, like for me personally, like where I'd, I'd, I'd like to invest my time moving forward is like, okay, like we can take some of those features, we can... Um, we can merge the stuff into into main, and then um, kind of move forward as a community that way, as opposed to filling in the gaps in in, in that current branch. It's, um, it's very similar because like we can look at what's in main, and we can like um, you know there's there's some patches that we'll just you know that we can just pull right directly. And the, and the one problematic one is that transition to transact where 
we wouldn't want to pull that exactly. We would want more finesse and to not break the current transaction processor support. Um, so it's it's down to the practicalities, right? So to be nice to the splinter community, we just warn in advance and advertise that this is what they need to do to switch to the branch. To, so to switch to what is currently main, but will be, you know, branch X. Right. What what would you want to call this branch? Do we want to throw a new number in there so everybody's aware of what's happening, or um, instead of one three, call it a one four, and start merging into that? Uh, well, we called it like one ninety nine <laughs> informally, but um, uh, I think just giving it um, uh, a name that's not a version number because we could see like the current. One three growing up to be two point oh. So I I, I don't want to like take away from that ability for us to kind of get to the same point by a di different direction um, by like claiming version numbers. Um, uh, we like the main branch has never been released. It's never been declared ready for um, uh, like production or anything like that. So so we have we we. We were very careful never to, um, other than just kind of developer discussions, uh, not, um, you know, kind of claim that it was ready. So, so I don't think there's a big concern um, just picking a different different branch name. Um, I have to think okay. more about that. I haven't come up with one yet, but. Ooh. Who should we have on that? Should that be yourself, Kevin, Bill, anybody else? I mean, I think yeah, everybody else is working I'm, for one of the companies. I'm probably the only maintainer that has permission enough to do that stuff. So. Okay. Um, it's very easy. It's not like a time consuming thing. It's just like a more of a big decision type of thing. Right. So I think we should go ahead with this unless there's objections from anybody, anybody on the call. I think you just uh, pick the branch name and then uh, put a read me somewhere just to warn people what's happened. And okay. Just a note yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right. So you're not scratching so your head figuring out what happened. Yeah. So let's make sure we post that. Um, up on Discord in several places and, and possibly under announce that way um, it kind of gets permanently hung there as well as the active um, two active channels that are there. So let's get it posted in all three once it, it, it happens so people understand what's going on. Um, any more discussion on that one? So I, I have a question. Um, 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 Embarrassingly, I've pretty much ignored main because I almost all of our work has been in the one one dot branches. So um, I've pretty much tuned out of it for a while. What are the in, in you know what's the elevator pitch or what are the main changes that have gone into main that aren't in the regular one series? Is you said network layer stuff? Is there anything else? I think it's easier to talk about the vision than like focus on like what's currently in, in main. Uh, in terms of um, like our intent and direction, because uh, some pieces aren't there, but it's hard to talk about, you know, being compelling without kind of uh, the whole. Um, uh, one one of the reasons that we started Splinter was just a rec recognition by us, you know, the, like the the authors of Sawtooth, right that wrote all the code that that the networking layer is bad right it's uh it's got some pretty extreme problems with it mm -hmm. um and there's even more problems with the journal and stuff like that the abstractions aren't good uh it's extremely difficult um to make changes there without breaking something uh and it's always to some extent always been broken because of uh how it's written 
um, you know, that's uh, that that's an artifact of um, uh, the intense uh, uh, effort over quite a long period of time to construct it and get it to the feature set it is, right? So uh, not taking away from that, but just saying uh, it has issues. Um, so we're looking at uh, moving that to Rust, say like, okay, like we actually don't want what's there now, it has issues. Um, you know, what do we want? Uh, so we started kind of thinking about that and thinking, okay, how should this work cleanly? Uh, and that turned into Splinter. Um, and how I saw Splinter initially was essentially just a lower level uh, networking layer that we would use under Sawtooth. Um, so most most of the thinking uh, in the early days, uh, Splinter was, um, you know, kind of at that layer. Like, if you think about um, dividing things up cleanly, what would you want at that layer versus, you know, mixed with the other layers and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so we put a lot of effort into in, into that layer into reconnections things that like in one three uh you know are are rather broken those problems don't exist in splinter's uh network layer um uh but as splinter kind of grew up took a, a a life of its own um and you know we kind of started to use it to uh kind of prototype things that uh, uh, eventually, you know, you know, from a vision perspective, we would see like, okay, this would make sense for Sawtooth, but we can't do it in the Sawtooth code base. Let's do it on top of Splinter, and then we can talk about how to get it back over to Sawtooth. So things like reconsidering uh, transaction execution, um, uh, you know, implementing transact, for example. Uh, and the reason that transact was in Splinter first is it's easier. <laughs> um, it's not so easy to uh, to deal with that mix of Rust and Python code that we currently have on three. Um, and so uh, all, all the transaction support, which is, you know, leagues and leagues better than than what's in one three, right? We took everything we knew, and we created something far more elegant. Um, uh, and, and really, the only thing missing in transact is, uh, you know, a, a a transaction handler to to um, uh, make external calls and you know, kind of act as a transaction processor. Um, all the other capabilities are essentially there, uh, in, including like really good um, WASM support. Um, that's what we cared about and still do care about. Um, so, uh, uh, so as as we're kind of exploring this, okay, so we have like transaction support. It's like you know, I would say half of Sawtooth, <laughs> right? Um, uh, in a cleaner model, more flexible, uh, doesn't have the issues. Um, uh, uh, we started to look at, okay, the worst part of Sawtooth is the journal. Why is that, right? Uh, and so we started to work on abstractions around, okay, what should it be, right? Um, you know, why does it feel like spaghetti code currently, right? The, the boundaries must be wrong, uh, which they are. And that is why it feels that way. Um, uh, and so we started to play around with that. Okay, what, um, you know, what does it look like if we, if we clean that up and we think critically about uh, the the function of um, 
consensus and uh, in the journal and stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of that is um, currently in Splinter. Now Splinter only because uh, of where our focus has been. Um, uh, is all two-phase commit. Because um, the use cases were uh, ones that just lent themselves to using two-phase commit. So it's a capability sawtooth. It doesn't have uh, to go down to two or three nodes. Um, but there are some interesting use cases where you don't really care about the trust issues but all these other features are compelling. Um, and that's kind of the space that we were um, playing in for a long time with, uh, with Splinter and Grid. Um, so it, it's really like every, um, so to bring it back to, to Sawtooth 2, the vision was, okay, let's take the work that we've done in Splinter and put the interesting pieces of that um, that make it into a blockchain into Sawtooth. Um, and so a lot of that work has been focused on uh, Lib Sawtooth and saying, or transact, but we essentially finished transact for uh, for what we needed at the time. Um, there's a long list of stuff that you know I'd like to see go into that code, but um, but in terms of like where it's at, feature completeness. You know, if you're using uh, if you're doing WAS and stuff, and you want the same model of smart contracts that Sawtooth has, um, it's really good. Um, uh, even if you don't want WASM, but you're using Rust, it's really good. Um, uh, but the things that Splinter doesn't do that, uh, you know, I couldn't see it really doing was, you know, um, you know, becoming a blockchain. You know, that's that's what uh, that's what Sawtooth is about. So all the all of these other things, you know, like the consensus model uh, and journal uh, in Splinter uh, are not block-based. Um, it's a, a simplified version so that we could uh, work on you know various pieces. Um, and so the uh, Sawtooth 2 is really about, okay, let's take the good pieces um, that we have in Splinter, uh, use those, but in, in Sawtooth and really Lib Sawtooth, rewrite the journal um, uh, and and all of the things that make uh, um, make it a blockchain that aren't like the lower level things, um, and reconstruct. Uh, that up. So, um, you know, main is part of the way there. Um, but uh, um, not so far that it that we can't like re rebase that that effort onto one three. Uh, I think the you know, the, the direction that we were going um, with that branch was really think of, um, think about redefining Sawtooth, right? From here's a validator to here's, um, here's a project that has a really nice Rust library for building distributed ledgers whether that's block-based like Sawtooth or whether that's non-block-based like um, Scabbard, which is the, the Splinter 
uh, transaction processor essentially. Um, you know, but really see the project as, hey, we're gonna build this awesome capability to build custom distributed ledgers, right? And the validator is gonna be a reference implementation. So things that we've seen over time, right? With like forking in within our own community and, and especially the people on the call here not contributing back all the time, right? Under that model is great, right? We build the pieces, you build your own ledger, you customize it, you make it do whatever you wanna do. And that's the model, right? Custom it, customize it, add value, replace components, um, you know, that, 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 and the validator just being like reference implementation. And so, you know, the reference implementation, like most re reference implementations, you know, um, can get users pretty far, but from like a development standpoint, seeing that as like, okay, what we're really doing here is building ourselves a toolkit, uh, to create these things. Um, and so, you know, with that, with that, like in mind, uh, kind of the vision for, um, you know, Splinter's roadmap and Sawtooth's uh, roadmap is essentially like, okay, eventually both use uh, lib Sawtooth and they're just slightly different takes on distributed ledgers, you know, Sawtooth being a proper blockchain. Um, uh, and, and Splinter not, so. Yeah, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the for the summary. Just um, it's good to know, you know, what the state what the state of the art is, right? And then, again, I admit to having not paid attention to the to the main development effort for a while. So, um, how okay, does it does it run? What is the current state? Can you actually stand something up off of main that actually you know functions? Yes, but it's not something that even I have done. Uh, recently, because it's not it's not an incredibly useful thing to do. Um, you like well, that depends. It wasn't it wasn't incredibly useful to me, <laughs> is what I should say. Um, because we weren't using use cases that uh, um, were like PBFT based, um, but you can stand it up. Uh, and we did this with like our grid testing and stuff because all of the 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 grid testing, um, you know, grid grid runs on both because everything in um, Splinter is one hundred percent compatible with um, with Sawtooth, and so you can kind of you know pick your distributed ledger that you want to run a grid on. Now we're gonna um, end of life grid eventually. Uh, but, um, uh, but that being the case, you know, they're very, um, they're very similar. Like, I, I feel like the difficult thing, uh, in Maine, which is extremely true, um, in one three as well, is like the difficulty of standing up a network, um, is it, pretty extreme. Uh, with all the the Docker uh, assumptions that we've made there and stuff, that kind of just uh, makes it more difficult than it needs to be. Um, but functional, but it can only run Wasm smart contracts, so maybe not functional uh, for this crowd. Why don't we go into some of the specific changes um, just to keep us on track so we can get this in under an hour. Um, any other questions to Sean on the first thing? And uh, he's given us a wide ranging view. Yeah, I just want to say that was that was that was a good uh, good um, presentation. Thank you very much for going over it. Um, just 
think it helps to to give a basic understanding of where everything is. Thank you. Say the thing so that we'll we the, the thing that we need to do post switching branch out is is basically come up with a game plan to identify the bits and the things that need to move forward. Right, there are definitely good bits in the main there. Uh, the and the goal of frankly the, one of the original goals of eliminating the Python is a great goal because a lot of the the boundary violations happen inside of the Python stuff, right? The so what we should do basically put on the board as the next thing to do after we do the merge is to go through and try to identify those things that need to be pulled across because they're better uh, or they skip us down down the way and then put them up on a board. I know we don't have, I don't, I don't think we haven't, we haven't even brought up Jira and I'm not supposed to be talking about Jira now, but, but that's point we the next lot to use Jira. There, right? <laughs> or, or whatever, right? It's, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, you know, whatever. some sort of tracker, right? To go for it as it goes through. But the, my point is next thing after we do the branches to come up with the plan of, of see, see what's, what the first first goers are because we're already talking about some right which it's like the database abstractions and stuff like that and those are those are similar do we need to have a board um that we start putting um actions on um or is there one that you're using sean um, I think it would make sense to to just use GitHub issues on the on the repos that are that are affected. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you know, we always use like internal boards for everything in uh, Jira or um, or whatever. But like, uh, I think we've used probably four or five different things. But um, uh, but from a project perspective, because we're not you know we're not going to run sprints together. Um, uh, it makes sense just to uh, enter them as issues and, you know, assign and stuff because I imagine people are going to uh, commit to, you know, timelines and stuff. Okay, so we'll start using um, GitHub issues to start putting notes in there. Okay. Um, ZMQ message. I can't remember who sent that. Um, do we want to start just talking through that one? Uh, yes. Yeah, that was um, that was uh, me and uh, Kevin. So um, yeah, we've um, been using uh, uh, Sawtooth um, as a transaction processor, um, and we've uh, done a couple of. Um, integrations in Rust and um, currently working on um, unifying our abstractions between a couple of different um, transaction press implementations. And uh, yeah, there's a, a, a few mainly um, ergonomic issues with um, the current um, Rust sort of SDK when it comes to using it from modern Rust, mostly around um, uh, using it from asynchronous Rust. Um, I, it was um, it was designed at a point when that wasn't particularly stable. I think um, it was it's, uh, around the around around the time futures were introduced into Rust, and it was um, still a little bit up in the air. I think, but the um, <coughs> yeah, there's two 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 main issues from the perspective of of, of um, using it as a client to um, uh, uh, communicate with. Um, a validator, the um, ZMQ message sender is both <laughs> blocking and concrete. So you end up having to put your own traits on top of that and um, and put an asynchronous implementation on top of that as well. If you need um if you if you need a sync. Um, and the other side of that is in the trans in, in the um, transaction processor itself is the um, the apply method supplies uh, a mutable reference, which is quite a difficult type to deal with, even in um, synchronous Rust. 
but in asynchronous Rust, it's um, it's 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 very tricky. You need to build a um, channel mechanism and effects systems on top of it to be able to um, uh, use the um, transaction context in a um, in anything um, uh, that's asynchronous that you're supplying into the apply uh, into the apply method. Um, so, so, Sean, so is this part of what you've already got done in your other? Um, project no, I, I, and we can move no over. because i i mean yes we've completely rewritten that code and that's actually in the sawtooth now because we um uh move transact there and that's all all part of transact um i think a couple things uh yeah all the, all that code is synchronous so so all the the async use case here is is new uh there's you know not those pain points at all without that um uh i think well there's a couple things one um i've seen the sawtooth sdk trade just kind of deprecated for a long time so um i don't think it's necessary like it's interesting because i was think thinking about this yesterday and today you know like oh you know what do we do with uh, the sawtooth sdk um because those of us using transact have have really just seen that like as completely uh you know replaced uh, essentially by what we have in transact um which doesn't include the transaction processor pieces right so it's not a hundred percent but it's like 90 percent it's like the mm -hmm. smart contract uh apis and stuff coming from transact um and we have a lot of smart contract smart contracts that probably have conditionals so that we can select between them um because that was interesting for for a period of time um so i think like at a high level um you know I, i'm on board with uh with iterating uh on that stuff i think that um uh we should do that in probably in lib sawtooth um if not lib sawtooth we should um we should make sure we have a clear delineation between what's in lib sawtooth and what's in uh sawtooth sdk um and that becomes hard because there's a lot of potential like code sharing um and so, um, you know, do we want more than one crate? It's essentially like uh, the, the question there, or do we just want a crate where you turn on the features that you're using? Is it shared because of the dependency on the protobuf primarily in the existing sort of in the existing sort of SDK? Because it does um, have both the transaction process side and the and the client side and all they all they really need all they really depend on mutually is the um is the protobuf generation really as far as i can see does does the mq to, to, code to some can all be shared or is shared right you use the same uh same uh the mq socket code for clients and for the tps Yeah, so I think that's something we can explore. We don't, you know, need to make technical decisions here. <laughs> uh, this kind of isn't the forum uh, for, you know, in-depth technical discussion um, that we haven't, you know, kind of already hashed out and thought thought deeply, like uh, on the channel. Um, so I'm not sure what the the answer should be, but that's, uh, you know, that's kind of where I'm starting from. Is oh, this was deprecated, maybe not now. Um, maybe we need to rethink this, uh, and maybe some of the stuff we have in LibSawtooth should go over to the, the SDK and we update that, um, uh, and, and do our, our development there. Um, or maybe we move it all to LibSawtooth. Um, so it need, it need, it needs more thought. I don't want to even recommend one way or the other like i know i would lean towards 
of Sawtooth because that's where the transact stuff is, but things can be moved around. So we should um, take this over to Discord and discuss it there and and see what we can come up with. I think that's yeah, the best place. Because really. I think I think really we need to um uh so it's interesting considering using like async stuff within apply. Not something that like um that I've really thought about because it's completely uninteresting if what you're doing is writing smart contracts. Um Right, because smart contracts should be um, shouldn't do things like that. <laughs> right, yes. it shouldn't shouldn't be that. It should be logic. Right, it should be stuff that can run within Wasm. And so you mm -hmm. wouldn't do anything asynchronous because it's it's it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, but if you go to transaction processor level, then that's different. So, I think it's it's important to differentiate. Like, okay, what are we? Um, what, where are we kind of, um, changing the interface and like, who's the, who's the, the target? Um, yeah, interestingly, our, um, our use case for the asynchronous bits in the transaction processor is, uh, purely for serialization for various reasons. We've ended up with, a, um, uh, some asynchronous stuff in our, in our serialization. Um, but the, the actual, um, core bit that would map to a smart contract um, would be um, that's still that's purely that is purely synchronous code but there is um there's a bunch of there's a bunch of there's a bunch of serialization and deserialization which goes on inside the transaction process before it's uh, dispatched to the um to the uh simpler synchronous uh bit that actually does the work So let's take this over to Discord. I'm trying to just get us running in the next 14 minutes here. Um, the apply signature processor. Do we want to have that discussion on Discord also? Or do we want to um, talk about it here? It's probably quite detailed, so I'm quite, I'm happy to move that to Discord if that's okay with everything else. So yeah, let's do that. That sounds good. And and my my concerns are going to be like how do we how do we get to like one code base? So, you know, we could take, you know, and and diverge significantly. And you know, my goal is going to be okay. I want to make sure that like we're 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 unifying more than separating. Um, so, you know, the viewpoint I'm going to bring is like okay, how do I use this within Splinter? How do I use it? Um, how does it impact all of the smart contracts that we currently have? Um, uh, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we can take it take it to Discord. Okay. Um, next thing on the list was existing test infrastructure. Should it be rebuilt? And especially considering we're changing um, quite a, a bit of infrastructure here or of, of the code do we want to rebuild that who would do that so last time i think i threw up my hand and said i would help out with that i have some time to deal with that this month uh, i think sean you said you had some terraform stuff for running up the test infrastructure see what happened yeah and this was like ad hoc stuff not stuff we would yeah, put in yeah. like ci system but like um yeah we could connect on that and, and try to get uh, one of those systems up. So now, shot. I didn't. I didn't maintain that stuff, <laughs> and the person that's that's maintained it um, uh, probably isn't too interested in uh, answering questions about it. So, um, like maybe, <laughs> but um, yeah, sure. It's just a place. Uh, but to but start. we can work through it. It's a place to start, and we can throw up some things. We've got some ideas. It'd be. The, my goal would be to get it so that it could run in a CI infrastructure, at least for the short tests, and then a long one, we'll see. But that's 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 the state goal. So I'll 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 ping you. And we'll gather up materials and I'll see what we can do. 
That sounds good. Uh, so I'll put on there, Sean and Kevin, take this up uh, offline. Anybody else want their name on that? Okay. Um, I think the new smart contract interface that is on there, I think that goes back into your first original discussion, unless there's something different that I missed on that. Yeah, I think so. I think that yeah. like we, we just need to differentiate between like because we use the same interface for maybe multiple things right now, but like, okay, we really shouldn't be doing that. Like we have a bunch of smart contracts that should be using a smart contract interface. And then we have the transaction processor stuff that is more flexible. And just to make sure that like, when we trans change the transaction processor stuff, we're not rewriting any of our smart contracts, uh, unless it's to like a better smart contract API, uh, of course, but like, that those are kind of two two different things and they, they're maybe too tightly coupled so i think that's the thing to think about there okay um the last thing on there is update any of the demos somebody's asked for that on discord a couple times don't know if we want to do that uh considering the changes we're talking about and that would be down the road maybe some firm has an intern who could do that once these changes are made because interns usually start in May. That's what I was thinking on there. You get the demos yeah. in GitHub uh, because right now if somebody like, tries the, to run them, they're a mess. Like which demo specifically? Like the supply uh, chain one or just yeah, like- Yeah, there's the, a supply. I, I probably was the problem with the XO demo, right? That I was broken too. I think the the XO. Oh, okay, one. so just like documentation and uh, probably primarily Docker issues. Yeah, mo most likely it's probably just you know there's a disconnect between something changed and the documentation was never updated, or you know somebody forgot to build the Docker container or something. I think it's mostly stuff like that. Um, well, the nice there, the nice thing to report here is we have. Uh, all, all of the the website stuff <laughs> is is actually all hooked up and like commits and merges so that repo will update the, the live site and stuff which is oh, that's that's one good. of the more recent things that we that we did is converted over to Jekyll and stuff and made it um, <coughs> accessible um, before it was very hard to deal with but you can actually just go into the doc repo and just run uh you have to install just first and then you can do just run and then you can run the site locally and uh and work on it it's very easy okay um so I'll, I'll table that one for now and hopefully this starts um getting itself out over time uh high priority bugs or issues anything that we need to talk through on that um that needs to be handled fairly quickly. Anybody have any of those? I don't think so right now. You but think, let's keep that as an agenda item always. Yeah. And anything on an open discussion that we want to talk about that we haven't talked through? Is yeah, monthly a good... Okay, go ahead, Sean. Uh, just throw this out there. So our current like maintainer policy uh i think could use a revision um uh i think um primarily uh in in two ways um i think um the first um uh is defining some inactivity period by which uh, we might retire maintainers if we cannot easily contact them to ask them if they want to uh, uh, be maintainers um, or just a period by by which like you know we, we've kind of defined the period so that you know no one is offended if we change their status uh and rules around that uh the current the current policy is ask um which is is um i think the best policy 
uh, for uh, folks that are um, that have a lot of uh, knowledge that like we would rather be uh, we would rather keep on the project than eject from the project because uh, if they do come back, they come back with uh, knowledge that that maybe the rest of the group doesn't have. And so to be very careful about removing people that fall into that category. Um, uh, but at the same time, it uh, feels like we have a lot of uh, uh, inactivity um, uh, on, on folks that are, are unlikely and probably don't have that, that level of knowledge. Uh, uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is making it clear about kind of the criteria by which we add new maintainers. Um, the, the current um, current process is all of the maintainers vote. Um, and that leaves a lot of ambiguity because you know, in, in our heads, we have the criteria. The criteria is something like you have to have been committing in the project for a long time. You have to um, you have to be following all of the community rules, all of the pull request rules, all of that. You know, before before we would uh, add someone as a maintainer. And so my thought is, you know, instead of leaving it ambiguous, uh, we should probably document what the expectations are. Uh, make it more concrete so that it's achievable. Um, and so uh, I uh, am probably going to draft up, uh, um, and I'm thinking that this is like something that we just add to the website in terms of like, here's what our rules are that would replace the current process, um, uh, but also make it like very, uh, Kind of explicit, um, kind of on both on both ends, uh, and so uh, mention it here because it would be great if people have thoughts about what that should be, the duration of time of involvement before before like um, adding maintainers, uh, the duration of time before retiring maintainers. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would take that as, as input as I as I write this up. Okay. Any other thoughts? Sure, this sounds good. Just to throw out the note is that apparently, according to Hyperledger, anyway, you're supposed to put the rules inside of the maintainers MD in the repository, which makes sense. Yeah, we can link it there for sure. And lastly, a month from now, a good time to reschedule the next or schedule the next meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, so we'll put the next uh, Rye. Can you help me schedule that for the next meeting? Yeah, I think it's already set to be recurring, but I will check. Perfect. So I'm just kind of the um, trying to stick this stuff together so we get going. Um, if people have thoughts, let me know. Um, other than that, I think we're done for today. Trying to keep it at one hour. Any last thoughts or that's it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>